Hi everyone, in today's video we are going to work on the detector API. Uh, so following from the last, last video what we did was on the detector app, we did integration between the app and the API. So we did some refactoring as well and today's, uh, in today's video we are going to do the validation of our request body, which is detection registration. So the steps for doing this in, the, in, uh, if, in case you're using Spring uh, Web, uh, there are three steps. Uh, or could, can be four, but three steps, the basic ones. So first one is to add the dependency. So we have a Spring Boot Starter validation. Refresh here. The second thing is to annotate our classes, or our in our case our record, which we want to like. What kind of validations do we want to have? So let's have the UID as not null. Also, another UID is not no, and double should be minimum uh, one. Should not have a speed zero. So, if the, there's a detection, the vehicle should be like driving at least in one uh, with one kilometer per hour. So, uh, that's so that's the second thing. And third thing, easy. You just come here and do a add valid. So, this is going to ensure that the validation validation is going to be applied. So, if the method here is called is because the validation passed. So uh, let's run the application. <clears throat> let's see if this is working. So let's create like have a curl uh, here and let's pass a minus 10 on this speed. And you see that the validation phase is 400. So if we pass 10, it works fine. So but you see that from our case right now, let's say like when we make make a like a bad request, it doesn't tell us anything, right? It doesn't tell us what what's going on, uh, and we want to have a, a information like this. So what we are going to do is let's do the following. Let's stop the application. Let's create a cl uh, class. Let's create inside support dot create a class called um, API error handler. And this is going to extend entity manager, no, not entity manager, entity response entity, entity exceptional handler. So this uh, response entity exceptional handler is a class from uh, from Spring, <coughs> which will handle like the errors which we're receiving. So for example, if the, the API throws an exception, if the method throws an exception, for example, like uh, let's say we have the bad request here, bad request. So like this one here, mismatch, there's something else, wait, um, message not readable, bind exception, uh, there is validation exception. So there are some exceptions like this, which is going to basically say, okay, when there's, there's this kind of, kind of exception, this kind of exception, that's how Spring is going to handle it's going what kind of response is going to send. So that's how it decides to build a JSON like this. The timestamp, bad request, and blah, 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 and the path. So what we are going to do here is, so if you check, that's the default implementation, right? So it's how, how it will return. And so that's like in the end, the create response entity, and you see the response entity, the body, and blah, 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 and everything. So from our side, we want to do, um, we want to override the exception handle validation. I think this is this, this one method validation exception. Let's confirm. Let's let's check. So here we are going to do a controller advice. And let's debug the application and let's see if this is this is calling this method here. <clears throat> let's come and curl. Uh, That's now we have something a bit different about blank. Now it's something different. Let me check. I have started handle validation method. Let's check this one method handler, handle handler. I don't know. Let's just confirm which is the right one we have to subscribe to, to override. Validation, argument validation. I don't argument. Yeah, I think this one is the right one, to be honest. Let's check. Yep, 
yeah handle method argument not valid that's the one we want to get so so if you see the exception it comes it's method argument not valid exception right so what we are going to do let's remove this other two here <clears throat> and let's implement our new our like our logic here so first of all i want to create a class called uh, api uh, validation errors which is going to have a list of another class another record called api validation error and here i'm going to create this record which is going to have the field which is is wrong in the message or the error so what i'm going to do here uh, let's go and get exception dot um, get binding result get field errors or let me check so what i want to go what i want to do is like find out all the problematic uh, fields all the fields which are which have errors and create like a list of uh, errors which have basically the field and the error uh, which is happening uh, so what's exactly the error about this field so for that let's do some discovery on this so if i do a map let's do for each just for me to understand what kind of field error it is what kind of data it has field error dot get field and yeah that's exactly what i want so First, I get the binding result, get field errors. Now I'm going to do a map. And uh, here we have the field error. I will create a new API validation error, which has the field error dot get field and field error dot get. I will use the default message. So here you can, as you can, you can see in the extension itself, we can we have access to the message source, so you can use. Uh, the internal standardization so you can get a proper message but that's not what i want right now i just want to get a simple thing then to list yeah not in fact not in fact not to list yeah can be to list so here we have a errors and here we can return a response entity value request body is going to be a new api error uh, validation errors oops uh, validation errors passing the errors here itself errors okay that's it let's run our application and see how this is working right now and if i call with the wrong speed it returns to us errors field speed error must be greater than or equal to zero now if you try to send like a totally empty um, JSON, it should complain about also equipment and ID itself. Let's see how it looks like. So ID must not be null, equipment ID must not be null and field must be null. Great, that's exactly what we wanted. So as you can see there, you can also do some uh, some investigation and checks, uh, what also what kind of uh, methods you have here because you can also extend and give a proper uh, response to what you want. So not media not acceptable, type not acceptable, and preferable. There are a lot of different ways of how Spring uh, handles the response for some specific errors. So those errors they are errors which happen before your application comes uh, there is most probably something like also internal here uh, exception internal which handles like internal exception uh, from the if like from from the api itself uh, but uh, mostly though this is a good way for you to handle errors which happen before your logic ex execute so for example like when you have a validation before the endpoint is, is even called so um, that's basically it so uh, in the next next video what we're going to do we are going to do to start to use open api to define to define the, the documentation of our rest endpoint using open api so we're also going to use swagger ui for that and because that's a that's a pretty nice way for us to see right so if you're you have like a, another another team integrate with your api they can they can have some 
insights about how to integrate with API by looking at the response. But anyway, it's, it's a great practice to also have the documentation to for them, for the users who are going to integrate with your API, they understand exactly what you were expecting. So that's what we are going to do on the next video. I hope you like this one uh, and see you in the next video. Bye bye.